Hey guys, Charles Shark Reviews here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Transformers Studio Series Deluxe Class Rise of the Beast Scorponok. So, here he is in his Scorpion mode, and yeah, so before we take a look at Scorponok, as always, let's take a quick look at the packaging. So here it is, and yeah, so, um, yeah, this is the, uh, Actually, only the, I believe the second Scorponok figure we've gotten to do the series because the first one uh, came with I think it was Blackout, um, the leader class one, and I mean that's the only one Steel series they have. But um, it came like with this small so, sort of core class size Scorponok, uh, non transformable, um, and yeah. But this is the first uh, separate figure of Scorponok we've gotten, so uh, that's pretty cool. But um, Unlike that one being based on the 2007 movie, this one's based on Rise of the Beasts. And yeah, so here it is, uh, here's the packaging. On the top here you got uh, Transformers Rise of the Beasts, Cartomi, Transformers, and get um, a uh, CGI render of Scorpion right there. <laughs> Look at that face. <laughs> oh man, those teeth. Um, he's Studio Series number 107, uh, Predacon Scorpionok. I believe the only Predacon in the movie, and they didn't really mention it. Uh, 107, Steel Series. Yeah, uh, or a close look at Scorpion right there. Yikes. <laughs> Those teeth. Um, yeah, Deluxe Class on this side. Get a uh, more further look at the Scorpion mode. And for some reason, they still do this with the generic releases. He's a, an Autobot, apparently. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, on the back right here, uh, you, know, you got all this right here, so you get the uh, product shots. Um, the name of the backdrop is Rainforest Fight, even though Scorponok wasn't in that scene, but whatever. Um, basically, you get some CGI renders right here, and here he is with the backdrop, and here's the very short bio right there. So if you want to pause and read that, there you go, but I don't think you'll need to pause because it's pretty quick. Um, and it's 20 steps can be heard, and all this right down here, and here's the bottom. And that's pretty much it for the packaging. So let's bring Scorpionok right back into frame. And yeah, so uh, this is one of the first of the uh, Steel Series 2024 figures because uh, a lot of the other Steel Series figures I've been taking a look at so far this year are from last year. <laughs> but um, this one's actually from this year. Uh, well, it's technically produced in 2023, but uh, released now here in early 2024, so, um, yeah, here is Scorpionok, and, um, yeah, he did appear in the Rise of the East movie, well, multiple Scorpionoks, I guess, um, and I guess they all had slightly different colors, so the, uh, the one they chose for the Studio Series one is kind of, um, like this sort of dark grayish blue, and, um, coated with some purple, um, and I think it does look pretty nice, so, um, here's a close-up look at his head sculpt. I think it looks pretty nice. Uh, of course, it doesn't have all the teeth, but that's okay. And yeah, and you got the uh, the very scorpion-like uh, claws. And I, I do like those razors they got right in the palms of his hands. I think that's nice, sort of claws or whatever. <laughs> but um, yeah. And of course, you got a Predacon logo right up here. So the traditional one, not the one that they use for the movie. And yeah, we got some silver here on the legs. And of course, these are the robot mode legs, but they're used for the hind legs of the scorpion. And yeah, here's uh, this way it looks like at the bottom. Got some hollowness, but not too bad, honestly. Um, you can tell this is just full up arms right here. Not the best looking, but not the worst. Certainly not the worst. And yeah, here's a view of the tail. And yeah, I do like the silver that they used right here for the uh, the claw. Oh, this one focus. There we go. Um, yeah, I like the details too. Kind of looks like a bird. <laughs> I just realized it kind of looks like a bird. You got the beak, you got the eye, and um, yeah. <laughs> but um, it, it kind of reminds me of Laser Beak from Dark of the Moon, actually, a little bit, uh, just with a longer beak. I don't know. <laughs> just just realize it now. But I do like how this metallic purple fades into the gray. I think that looks nice. And yeah, so I'll just do some random uh, shots right here. So then here's what it looks like the front, uh, the top, bottom, and each of the sides. And 
the back. <laughs> Not really a whole much there. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it there for uh, the Scorpion mode, uh, at least appearance-wise. And yeah, I really dig the look of it, uh, even if, you know, the raw feed look a bit off, but yeah, it's not too bad. Um, but anyways, for articulation, head is on a ball joint, so it can tilt it side, side to side. You can move it upwards this much, and then downwards that much. The reason why it goes all the way down there is for robot mode. We'll take a look at that later. Um, the arms can move around, you can kind of move them outwards a bit like this, although they're kind of meant to stay like right here. I mean, I guess you could move it this much, maybe. Um, this looks kind of off, especially with how this all looks. Um, and you can, of course, there is ball joint right here, so you can kind of get some in out movement there. Um, legs, oop, <laughs> they're not supposed to go up all the way there. Well, I guess they can, but, um, yeah, they do move, and there are actually ball joints right here for, uh, these joints right here, like the knees, elbows, I'm not sure where you call them. <laughs> yeah, they can wiggle around. Uh, these ones, don't, though, don't have the ball joints right here at the knees slash elbows. Again, I'm not sure what they're called. Um, I guess considering their legs, probably knees. Um, but yeah. Um, and of course, legs can move in and out right here. And you got ball joint here for the feet. Um, and the tail can move kind of like back. Oh, <laughs> and it's gotten unplugged. But yeah, I can move it. Not that much. Uh, unfortunately, a problem I have, uh, at least with my copy, is that um, I'm not sure really if it's just going to be my copy because I mean this is designed pretty normally. So uh, if you push this out too much, then this easily pops off. And even though I don't try to, sometimes this pops pops off. So uh, I guess that's one little complaint I have, at least with my copy. And there's Ben right here as well. Um, that's pretty much sure for articulation. It's kind of weird because again, he turns into a Robo Scorpion, but. Um, but I, I think you guys got the idea of how he moves. Um, so yeah, now anyways, uh, for the almost size comparisons, we won't waste time doing like all these different Rise of These comparisons, um, especially since these are the only Predacon movies, so we only have to try all the Terracons and such, but we will do one comparison now with the other uh, Scorponok that we've gotten in the line, and uh, well, this one's from the main line, this is from the studio series, but regardless, it's both supposed to be Scorponok from Rise of the Beasts, and yeah, now this is the Beast Weaponizer one, uh, Target exclusive, and uh, yeah, here they are both together. Um, and yeah, that, this is what like what I mean. This this one has like a similar idea where instead of the um, bluish gray, it's got sort of dirty brown. I mean, brown's a pretty dirty looking color, but um, especially here, it's kind of like a tannish brown sorta. Um, and it does have the green thing in and out, just like with the purple here. So it's same kind of idea. I do like that. Um, now, apparently, there are listings for uh, next year's figures, and apparently, um, when I did my news video, I brought up about, like, I'm not sure about this one character that I saw from TS7. Apparently, that's supposed to be another one of the Scorponok uh, characters or whatever, but it's supposed to be like this, but colored almost like this, or red. Because there is concept art of all these different uh, Scor Scorponoks, I guess you call them, and they have different colors, so they have, like, the purple fading in, the green fading in, as you see here, uh, red fading in, yellow, orange those kinds of colors, so it'll be interesting to see uh, how many uh, how many Scorpnox Hasbro does, like, um, or I'm pretty sure the character that, uh, I forgot the name of the character, but it's not Scorpnox for the uh, the other kind of recolored one of this, um, but regardless, they're, they're all basically Scorpnox, so um, yeah, I'm not sure how many they'll do, but it'll be kind of interesting, I mean, there are plenty of them in the movie, so hey, uh, <laughs> I guess this guy could become the next army builder, but um, yeah, that's pretty much it with that. And yeah, this this one's a lot better because I mean, um, aesthetically it's more accurate than compared to this. But this wasn't too bad. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for uh, the mode size comparison. So let's get right down to transformations. So starting off, you also want to remove the tail, and then next you just want to untab the shins from this tab right here. You want to do the same thing right here. There you go. And then next, you just want to straighten out the arms or claws or whatever, and just leave them there for now. And then next, you just want to flip up this panel right here, the chest panel, and you're going to want to uh, bring this all out. Or actually, you do want to untab the legs from right here, as you can see. Untab this layer, and then uh, you can bring this all down. There you go. 
And uh, I, don't, I don't think you should close this up yet. Uh, I think there's a couple things we need to do for her, actually, maybe you could, but I won't focus on that right now, but... Um, so yeah, next, what you want to do is you want to rotate around the ball joint right here, so now the leg should be facing like this, or the shins. And then, um, there's a tab right here that goes into that slot, and that should close up nicely. And there, and then, oh yeah, there's also like a little notch right here that goes into like a little slot, it's hard to see, but it's right there in the back. And that's how it clips in, sort of. Um, and you want to do the same thing right here, and close this up, and we got that done. Um, so yeah, then next, uh, I think you can close up this chest panel, so we'll do that now. Um, and then, so there's kind of, there's sort of like this hole right here, kind of like this uh, hollowed out area, and that's supposed to go, um, or supposed to connect to this like sort of circular piece. Right there, I'll close up. There you go. Then next, straight out the head. Yes, the roll mode heads is the exact same one from the Scorpion mode, so um, Hasbro definitely took their time on that one. Not. <laughs> um, but yeah, then next, you just want to move the uh, this like piece right here, not the individual Scorpion legs, but rather this one right here that connects both of them there, and just move them backwards. And then I think you can just move these out like a little bit the legs themselves so it's now cluttered as much back here and there you go so there's that and uh, it's gotten tab again <laughs> um oh yeah yeah that's it um yeah i knew there was like one more step for uh this chest area so next you just want to bring down uh these shoulder bits or what will become the shoulder bits and there's these tabs on both sides and uh i think they go i don't see anywhere they go into but uh, I, I think the chest does close up around where those are, so... Uh, there's an, actually, no, I don't think those tabs have anything, anything to do with the chest, or maybe it does. I, I think it kind of keeps them in place, so you just want to move those in, close up the uh, waist right there. Oh, <laughs> it's gotten down again. Um, and finally, you just want to undo the arms, so... Next, you just want to, uh, so you have right here, you just want to move out the hands from uh, the claws and then swivel the biceps there, turn out the arm, and then, of course, move the hand that way. And do the same thing right here. Let's do that, and that, and boom, there you guys have Scorponok in his robot mode. And while it's unnecessary, I don't think it's uh, a really bad robot mode. I mean, um, is it like, you know, mind blowing? No, but, um, you know, I'm so glad Hasbro at least, you know, tried to give uh, Scorpion Eye Care remote mode, even though he didn't have one in the movie. But, um, yeah, let me string him out a bit. He's kind of an odd one, um, as you can already tell. But, yeah, the shins still tab in that great. Yeah, there he is, right there. Yeah, I think it looks okay. And, Raw mode. Obviously, not the strongest mode, but makes sense. He never transformed in the movie. Uh, they're they're almost like drones in the way the uh, Scorpion acts. They're just kind of a bunch of like these scorpion drones. Which I, me personally, I think that was a waste of opportunity because they could have actually had you know the real Predacon Scorpion. Act. Maybe one of them was. <laughs> I, I'm not sure, but we'll see. And the Rise of these sequels. Hopefully, we'll get the Predacons. But anyways, um, you know, let's take a look the head sculpts and uh yeah totally um a lot different from what we saw before right <laughs> but um yeah there's that again just see if you want to look at that um i really like how they use the claws as the uh shoulder pads i think that looks nice and i like the gold paint they got right here and more of that uh metallic purple fading i think that looks great and yeah all this right down here paint for the shins a lot of the stuff we already saw but it's just nice to see it in robot form and he's got this uh, big, uh, big old backpack right here. I mean, it's not that big. I mean, he's got the lakes hanging out, and this kind of big uh, backpack. Like, it's literally, it literally does look like a backpack. This piece right here, kind of, kind of like the shells the Ninja Turtles have on their backs. Kind of looks like that. Um, but you know, not too shabby. <laughs> Again, uh, you know, we never saw Scorpionox transform in the movie or want the Scorpionox transform, so it doesn't really matter uh, how the robot looks. As long as it looks like a decent robot mode, then I'm fine with it, but in terms of accuracy, it doesn't matter at all. But, um, 
But yeah. Now, anyways, uh, for the articulation, his head is on a ball joint. We already seen, a lot of this we've already seen before, but um, or at least with the head. Uh, so I can move side to side. Can look up that much, or actually a lot more. And uh, can look down only that much, at least in this mode. Um, shoulders are on ball joints. You can see right here. And yeah, I can't move a full 180. It's a little bit difficult with these scorpion arms. Um, and I can also go in and out like that. It does have a bicep swivel, a double bend at the elbows, a ball joint at the wrists. And uh, let's see, he does have a waist swivel right here. Uh, it's kind of this section right here, the crotch section, kind of reminds me of the one on uh, was it Legacy Iguanas, or at least the tail. I don't know, or, uh, I forgot, like, the, the crotch section of, um, Iguanas kind of reminds me of this right here. I, I, I'm not sure why. <laughs> Anyways, um, but yeah, the, uh, thighs can go up this far. These ball joints are pretty tight, actually. Um, so yeah, the legs can go up this far, back that far, and then out that far. It does have a thigh swivel. Knees do bends, and the ball joints are up. Excuse me, the ankles are in ball joints, so I can get ankle pivot and the feet moving back and forth. So that's pretty nice. Um, pretty decent articulation, I'd say. Um, it does get a bit cluttered with the legs back here, mainly for the arms, but um, I don't think it's too bad. I think it's about the average for a uh, deluxe. So yeah, <laughs> I got I got to strain him out again. That that's like one of the few issues I have with this guy is that. Because of how his robot mode is, it's kind of a bit of a pain to uh, stand him up properly. Um, I just kind of have it where his knees are sort of bent. I think that's how you should have it. I mean, I've seen a lot of the promo photos like that, so I guess that's what you're supposed to do. I don't know. But um, yeah, now anyways, for accessories, uh, we already saw it before, it's his tail. Um, that's all he's got. He doesn't have no guns, no swords. I mean, I guess he could use this as a sword of some kind. More so as like a whip. But, um, but anyways, yeah, oh, I dropped this. Um, so, if you're wondering how he, he holds it, he, he doesn't hold it like this, where he can just plug it now, because he's got like, this kind of um, port right here, like 5mm port, and uh, his hands aren't shaped to fit that, obviously, like a lot of other Transformer figures. So, um, But there's a unique way he holds this, and that is, as you can see right here in the inner part of his forearm, um, there's a hole right there, and uh, what you do with this 5mm port is, uh, you just want to kind of like bend it this way, like that, and then you're going to plug that in to that hole, and what you can do then is uh, put the uh, two fingers here in the center, right into this hole, oh, oh and uh, got untabbed, takes a little bit of adjusting, and once you do that, uh, there he is with his tail weapon. Not the greatest weapon, but um, yeah, at least he's got some use for it. Um, of course, you can just have it in the back and plug it right back into his uh, butthole right there. And um, it can't go up, like a lot of Scorp Scorpion Eye figures have it where uh, the tail can go like all the way up here. Uh, this guy can't do that. Uh, it just kind of stays back here, but it can. you can plug it in right there, but it's really just meant to go in his hand, but I'll just remove this for the remainder of the review, so. Um, yeah, now, anyways, uh, let's do, let me strain it out first. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's, again, one of my main issues with this guy. Straining him out here in robot mode, not fun. <laughs> but, um, yeah, now, anyways, for the robot mode size comparisons, here he is with the Beast Weaponizers, Scorponok. And honestly, in my opinion, I kind of like this raw mode better, because um, he's got his own head. It, it's more echoing of the original Beast Wars Scorponok, where he's got the visor, um, you know, the big chin. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I, I kind of prefer this more. Um, not saying this robot mode is bad, it's just, I think this one's a bit more original. But I could see why, you know, they decided to go with this. Because, I mean, in the first place, he never even had a robot mode in the movie. Maybe, I forgot if there was concept art of him transforming, but... Um, but in the final movie, we ne never saw him transform, so it didn't really matter, but um, me personally, I kind of would have preferred to have this robot mode, but I guess it was easier for them just to use the scorpion head as his robot head. 
um, but, you know, um, so it could be better, but, um, I'm, I'm fine, I'm honestly, though, I'm fine with both, it's just, uh, kind of like this better, specifically the head. <laughs> um, yeah, that is it for the robot mode size comparisons. And of course, with them being Studio Series, we got a backdrop right here. Um, and yeah, I think, I forgot, uh, <laughs> my, if my memory serves right, I think this might actually be the first backdrop I've gotten Studio Series of this right here, or, no, oh, didn't Shidor tell us to come with, like, one like this? Ah, I forgot. <laughs> um, you know what, my memory does not serve right, it's, it's terrible, but anyways, um, but yeah, here's the backdrop right here, um, Scorponok never show up in the scene, obviously, if you've seen it, um, yeah, uh, but, yeah, like, all this right here, Steel Series, number 107, Transformers Rise of the Beast, Transformers, uh, an incorrect ABBA logo, um, and yeah, so, anyways, yeah, I can just put Scorponok on this backdrop right here, which, like, first of all, he never transformed in the movie, as previously stated, and secondly, he was never in the scene, so this doesn't really matter. I, I think it would have been better if they had the, uh, the final battle as a backdrop, because that's the only scene, well, actually, no, um, the only other scene we saw one of the Scorponoks was in the opening scene, where, uh, Scourge, uh, goes over to, uh, the Maximal Planet, and, you know, he has, he's got a couple of those Scorponok drones, so, um, I guess they could have done that, or the Final Battle, those are, you know, those are the only two scenes we saw these Scorponok characters, so, um, why they chose this backdrop, I have no clue, but, um, there's that, if you like collecting these, so, yeah. So, there you guys have my review for the Transformers Studio Series Deluxe Class, Rise of the Beast Scorponok. And I gotta say, um, while he's certainly not the best figure we've gotten to the series, he's you know, a pretty fun one at that. Um, the Scorpion mode obviously is great, uh, definitely aesthetically is very, very accurate to the Rise of the Beast movie, um, but the robot mode, it's kind of an unnecessary thing, I mean, of course they had to include it, because since it is Stu series, they want to have these figures transform, which makes sense, we have to pay over 20 bucks for them. Um, but, uh, is, yeah, again, is a ro robot mode necessary? No. Um, is it a bad one? Not really. Um, but again, me personally, I do prefer the one that they had on the Beast Weaponizers one. Uh, specifically the head. I think, you know, it's less lazy, but I can understand why Hasbro decided to be lazy with this guy, since, again, he was, you know, an alt mode only character. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, for the, you know, for being in unnecessary robo mode, it's, uh, you know, it's really not that bad. Um, could be better, definitely, but, um, I think it still looks cool, especially with the, um, again, those claws being the shoulder pads, I think that looks nice. And, um, the tail weapon's okay, <laughs> it's kind of an odd one, but, um, in, in a way it makes sense, but the way it's configured is a bit weird, but, um... But, you know, overall, a uh, pretty, neat, uh, pretty neat little figure. Um, is it a necessary one? No, but, you know, if you want to get all the characters from Rise of the Beast, of course, it's necessary, but um, overall, I think it's a pretty neat little figure. Not much, but just, just neat. That's all it needs to be. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so anyways, guys, make sure you guys like, subscribe, comment, share for more, and comment down below what you guys think of this figure. So, anyways, guys, as always, to all, or one.